Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending the commissioning ceremony of Victor Cobo as a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps. Now we're going to have a prayer from Corporal Brady. Father God, thank you for this time of fellowship with all who came to be here. We thank you for, for good leadership in this life and for those who rise to the occasion as good leaders. Thank you for calling Victor Kogo to this. We pray for Victor to lead Marines well, to instill courage into all Marines he commands, to be a man of character and a man of God when it's most difficult in the coming years. Lastly, bless Victor and Jessica's marriage as he begins this great journey as an officer and help them both to never lose sight of you. Bless this ceremony and our time together here. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for a national anthem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the officer presiding over today's ceremony is Lieutenant Colonel David D. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Well, how appropriate is this that we do this ceremony in a bar? <laughs> As many of you know, the Marine Corps was started at John Tavern, 1775, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So it's very much appropriate that we do this ceremony here. Albert Pine, who was a great American writer back in the 1930s, said, What we do for ourselves dies with us. What we do for others remains eternal. Today, Vic is raising his right hand and he's committing to give himself to others. Whether that be as the Marines that are in his charge, he will, he will put them before himself. He will take care of them like there is a to her as brothers, because they are as brothers and sisters. In doing so, that comes with a very strong and heavy commitment. It's a huge sacrifice to raise your right hand and say, I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Many of you around here know what that involves. It's a lot of long nights, a lot of time away from home, a lot of sacrifice for not just Vic, but for the entire Kogo family. So for that, I am truly grateful that you and others have stood up and said, yes, I will do this. My commitment to you is that I will do this. I will pray for you and your family, that you will continue successfully through your career, for the Marines under your charge, and for all who raised your hand in defense of this nation. I think President Reagan said it best when he said, some people go through life wondering if they've ever made a difference in the world. Marines do not have that problem. <laughs> so today, you're not gonna have that problem again. God <laughs> bless you, God bless the Marines, and simplify. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now will be the appointment and the oath of office. Please rise. The President of the United States of America, to all who shall see these presents greeted, know ye that reposing special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Ralph Victor Cordero Cogo, I do appoint this officer a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps. The next part of the ceremony is the painting of the bar. Lieutenant Kogo will have his bars painted by his wife, Jessica, and his mother-in-law, Marie. The next part of the ceremony is the traditional first salute. First salute is rendered as a gesture of respect and sign of camaraderie between officers and enlisted personnel. It's significant in that the officer and enlisted personnel act not as senior and subordinate, but as teammates and brothers in arms. As General John A. Lejeune, the 13th Commandant of the Marine Corps, wrote in the Marine Corps Manual, edition of 1920 of Chivalry, when knights in male raised their Bible friends for the purpose of identification. The Silver Dollar Salute 
has been around for hundreds of years and has continued to this day to provide a token of gratitude to the enlisted Marine for the respect that has been rendered for the first time. Rendering Lieutenant Kogo's first salute today is Gunnery Sergeant Bazaiko. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present you. say here, I did, uh, I think, what any other millennial would do, I just watch YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> and all the other lieutenants and officers, um, well, I couldn't find a whole, uh, anything that I get inspiration from. And so I turned to Marine Corps Ball speeches to see what they had said for inspiration. And Well, most of them were long and drawn out, so if I can't be remarkable here, uh, then I'll at least try to be short. So while I was planning this, uh, a lot of people were asking me why I was doing this at a brewery. <laughs> all right, well, nobody asked me that because all my friends are alcoholics. And, uh, <laughs> they would never question why I was doing this. Yes. No, but in reality, like the Lieutenant Colonel said, uh, the Marine Corps was founded in a place much like this. And so I think it's appropriate just, I gotta give you guys like a quick little brief version, especially for the people who don't know the background of the Marine Corps, it's really important to know. So the way I like to envision it is that a bunch of guys are sitting around drinking and they're talking about the Revolutionary War. And somebody brings up the fact that uh, the Navy's, well, they're pretty pathetic. <laughs> I mean, anything besides driving boats, of course. And that our, uh, Sorry, Sam. our boats and our supplies are being robbed and looted. And so they decided to do something about it. So the next day they serve it up we go to the Second Continental Congress, and uh, I believe the owner of the bar, he stands up, says something along the lines of this. Gentlemen, our name is terrible. I say terrible at anything besides driving boats, of course. I propose we have a core of protectors. So our boats and our supplies stop being robbed and looted. I propose we have Marines. And well, Continental Congress thought that was a pretty good idea. So they charge Samuel Nicholas to recruit some men. He goes to his bar manager, tells him to recruit, or, uh, organize a recruiting event by the end of the week. So that next Friday rolls around, and it's November 10th, 1775. He lures some men in with drinks or whatnot, and asks them if they wanted to partake in the killing, and the skinning, and the raw dogging of some British ass. <laughs> <laughs> Only the most brave and fearless men decided to join the newest corps of the Continental Marines. That Friday, ladies and gentlemen, became known as the Marine Corps birthday. The bar manager, Robert Mullen, became known as the first Marine recruiter. The owner of the bar, Samuel Nicholas, became known as the first Marine officer. And the brave men who enlisted that day became known as the greatest fighting force in the world, the United States Marine Corps. Yeah! Brave and fearless men like that are still around today. Whether in the military or not, people can't make a difference. And all of you that are here today, we're extremely influential and helping me achieve my goals. Whether you're pioneer the Marine Corps or not, you help turn a not so smart Brazilian kid <laughs> into a not so smart second lieutenant. <laughs> All of you did more than you had to to prove that it does take a village, but there are some special people that are here today that deserve a little credit. My biological parents and my biological family could not be here today. Uh, they would have loved to, but it just wasn't meant to be. And I wouldn't be the man I am today if it wasn't for my parents. I'd probably be an eggless swimmer somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I never had much of a grandfather, but one man kind of stood up for the job. That man is uh, Doug Castle, aka Papa. He's really taking me in with one of his He's had a huge effort in my aviation career, and I like to say that he's my grandfather from another mother. And when I was finally able to enlist in the Marine Corps, I seek the assistance from my friendly and neighborhood recruiters. And the guy that I talked to, he, well, he went over to the guy next to him, 
and was like, hey man, I got this kid who really wants to be a Marine. If you, if, I'll give them to you if you give me one of your email candidates, and we can both get our quota for the month. <laughs> Lucky for me, that guy accepted the offer, and I was blessed with who at the time, the Sergeant Psycho. He, uh, he put me in the Marine Corps, he's become an officer recruiter, and would you guess who recruited me today? <laughs> so I was honored to see two of his promotions. I was a groomsman at his wedding, and I get to watch him start a beautiful family with his wife, Jordan. And Gunner Sharp and Psycho definitely earned that first loop and that silver dollar, which by the way, who would have thought that a dollar cost more than a dollar, a lot more than a dollar? In 2005, I was a freshman in high school. And Master Guns Calderon, he was a recently retired, and what it seemed like pissed off brain. He uh, wanted to influence young kids uh, as he had done it before. And he did this by just being a, a good citizen and a model human being. And he didn't just do those things, he lived them. Okay, and he lived them by this set of rules that I quickly realized wasn't like the rest. You see, Master Guns, he wasn't just a school teacher. He was a Marine first. Being a Marine is all he needed to be a model citizen and a good human being. So in the words of Jess, we couldn't have said better, Master Guns is still the Marine virtues and values in you. And she's not wrong. So lastly, we have a man who I believe his reputation stands much taller than himself. A man who was once say, overheard saying, I've never killed anybody who didn't deserve to die. <laughs> a man who once had a Marine Corps ball only said he would love to help Lance Corporal Pogo become a pilot and quickly regretted that decision after Lance Corporal Pogo would not stop looking at him and blowing up his phone. <laughs> well, that man is Lieutenant Colonel D. He, uh, I stand here today, I think, because of his, his follow through to keep investing in me and making sure that I stand here today. Lieutenant Colonel Deep served uh, 30 years in the Marine Corps as both enlisted and officer. He acquired nearly 6,000 hours in military helicopters, 2,200 hours of which are the most badass attack helicopter in the U.S. Arsenal, the Cobra. Woo! Yep. So Lieutenant Colonel Deep today continues to serve veterans with a nonprofit that he started. He uh, started that with his own money and operating up his own house. So if anyone's actually in interested in donating for a good cause, his nonprofit's called Wake for Workers, and I can assure you he'll be much more responsible with your money than I would have. Uh, there's, one, there's one more person, and we all know that behind every great man is a great woman. And I'm no great man, but I do have a great woman. And Jess has not only uh, made this dream of mine a reality, but she has supported me all the way through. Thank you. <laughs> About six years ago, uh, when I first enlisted, I bought my first set of gold, of gold second lieutenant cars, and I gave it to her as a promise of a goal that I wanted to achieve. And while well, darling, today I fulfilled that promise. Yeah! 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 Just quickly, why the hell would you do that? <laughs> All of you that are here today, I thank you. And not only with words, but with the beer. All the rings here today, you've been extremely influential in my life and career. You guys, my eighth grade teachers here, yeah. and my middle school counselor, who God knows I needed. <laughs> I'm pretty sure half of the citizens of Brazil are in attendance tonight. <laughs> we have two Navy dishes from Florida. <laughs> and another Navy. Another Navy weirdo who shaved his year long beard just to be here in his uniform. <laughs> so, for Paul, Joe Walkway from Virginia, Army and Air Force guys, thank you for being here. I'm not really sure who invited you. <laughs> I'm sure they have free beer came on me. So, amongst all of you today are great people, and God can have blessed you with better people. He knew exactly what he's doing when he put you in my life. He is all knowing and almighty, and I certainly cannot be standing here today if it wasn't for his guiding hand, his loving kindness. So as for me, my drill instructors will be proud to know that now that I'm a second lieutenant, I do not think that I've made it, and I know this is only the beginning. I have a six month long training in Virginia and May, and then I'm off to flight school in Pensacola, so this is certainly only the beginning. I raise my glass to each of you, Pepper Fidelis.
My name is Sam Leitner, because I'm going to get to deliver your first duty as a Marine Corps officer. You're going to re-enlist me right here. Oh. Oh. By the authority vested in me, I do hereby re-enlist Navy Diver First Class Samuel Robert Leitner in the United States Navy. Given this 21st day of December 2017, raise your right hand. I state your name. <laughs> Samuel Robert Leitner. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I do obey the orders. I do obey the orders. Of the President of the United States. Of the President of the United States. And the orders. And the orders. Of the officers appointed over me. <laughs> According to the regulations. According to the regulations. Of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. So help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, that was <laughs> <laughs>